Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk business once again. As always, I'm really excited to have you here and to discuss yet another important topic which is related to open market claim processes. As you are already aware, in this video presentation series, we are discussing about Brexit and its impact on the Lloyd's business processes. Last time we discussed about the impact of Brexit on Lloyd's open market placement processes and this time we are going to discuss about the impact of Brexit on Lloyd's open market claim processes. So in this video presentation series, we have already discussed about the introduction of Brexit in its common sense. We also discuss about the Brexit impact on Lloyd's insurance market. And the second video presentation, we discuss about specifically about the Lloyd's Brussels subsidiary and how Lloyd's Brussels subsidiary is addressing some of the challenges due to the Brexit. In the last video presentation, we discuss about the impact of Brexit on Lloyd's open market placement process. And as planned in this video presentation, we are going to see what are the impacts of Brexit on Lloyd's open market claim process. So let's begin. So in order to appreciate this video presentation fully, I will strongly recommend you to watch my previous video presentation in the Brexit series to have a logical order to understand this video presentation. So for those who are new to my channel, I'm Ravi Shankar. I'm having more than 15 years of experience in the business analysis area. I'm largely associated with PNC and general insurance domain. If you have any query related to this video presentation or my previous video presentations, you can write me email at ravi.s.sharma or connect me at my LinkedIn profile. So once again, thanks a lot for all your email suggestions, pointers, etc. I really appreciate all of your emails. One thing which is very common, which is keep on coming to me about the messages, SCM and USM and uh, write back messages. Uh, and a few people really wanted to know what is there inside the message, how to read those messages. I'm thinking to produce a series on the message specifically. We are, we are going to discuss and see what is there inside the messages. And this series may be a slightly technical in nature, but I'll try to make it in a way that the business and list community will understand what information is coming in, into those messages. So stay tuned for more information on my channel. So let's do the quick recap before getting into the impact of uh, Brexit on open market claim process. So previously we understood that the broker will produce the business as usual. And if the business is having the EEA and non-EEA element, then the MRC will have uh, two separate sections. The managing agent will do underwriting on basis on those MRC and will put the stamp, the LBS stamp on the EEA section and normal stamp on non-EEA section. The business will then place to LBS and LBS will do proceeding back to the managing agent. And this proceeding will happen on the basis of 100% quota share treaty agreement. So LBS is just acting like a fronting reinsurer in this case. So this is how the MRC look like. If the MRC is covering risk from EA and non EA, like the way it is shown here, France and UK, then it's going to have a two section. If you can see over here, say for example, from the property section, then you are going to have a two subsection. One is for EEA risk and one is for non EEA risk. So this is how the MRC is going to, going to get separated or going to show the information from EA and non EEA zones. So let's talk about the impact of Brexit on the process and what is the current process, the claim process. So now let's talk about the high level open market claim process, the current process. The current process is very straightforward. So broker will do the first notice of loss, FNOL. And here in this stage, uh, the broker will manage the claim intervention and, and provide all the relevant information which is related to the claim. The second step is about the claim investigation and the loss assessment. Here in this stage, the managing agent or syndicate will do the coverage and liability verification. They will also perform the investigation and the claim evaluation. And finally, the claim negotiation and managing any sort of litigation which is related to the claim. The third step is settlement and subrogation. In this stage, the real settlement process will happen. The managing agent will disperse the claim through STFO and then if there is any recovery possibility then the claim recovery management process will trigger uh, subrogation recovery. 
And finally, the claim closer and management services here in this stage, the claim closer will happen and the managing agent will file a lot of information to the regulators and to, to the corporation of Floyd in terms of uh, producing the reports. So this is the current high level open market claim process and which is very straightforward. Mostly all the managing agents are following straightforward claim process, but they might have a slight variations based on their business process. In the so let's see the high level open market claim process from the LBS point of view. So here on the first page, FNOL, the broker will record the first notification of loss on the ECF system. And this will generate the message to the agreement party, usually the lead as a claim adjuster. So once the FNOL is recorded, the managing agent will process the FNOL and record everything into the into the system once the initial process is complete the class will produce and send the direct scm to the subsidiary so if you know the class system is a system where the, all the claim information is managed and the class system will generate the scm direct scm and send it to the lbs for further claim processing now here in this stage lbs received the direct scm and exchanging will also create the RISM because subsidiary ultimately placing the business back to the managing agent. So managing agent will also receive the RISM. So in this case, the subsidiary will receive the direct SEM and this will validate against the risk record head and any queries related to the SEM or to the risk will raise back to the managing agent. Simultaneously, the exchanging will create the RISM and issue it to the syndicate which will process them against the reinsurance policy, what they have issued. Now, from the claim movement point of view, the adjuster continue to handle the claim consistent with the existing managing agent process. Each changes in the claim will generate the SEM and simultaneously RISEM. And this message will be processed by the subsidiary and syndicate respectively. From the claim payment side, as I said earlier, this is largely unaffected. The broker will submit the claim payment remittance that will trigger the claim payment process, which will cover under the accounting and settlement and the STFO will get involved and they will do the settlement, the overall settlement. So the key point over here is the class is actually generating the direct SCM and send it to the LBS. And then class is also generating the RISCM and issued back to the syndicate because syndicate is holding the RI policy. And every time when there's a moment on the claims, the system will generate the direct SCM and the simultaneously the RISCM, which will send back the syndicate. So this is, these are the various changes over here. So let's have a quick review on how the claim overall claim process look like. So here we have actor like broker, managing agent, exchanging and LBS. So the broker will record the FNOL. The managing agent will review and assess the claim and they will create the claim reserves as well as do the claim adjustments. Once the claim is processed properly into the class system, the exchanging will generate SEM and send it to the LBS for their review and process. And they will also generate the RISM and send it back to the syndicates. And this process will remain same as always whenever there is a moment happen on the claim. As I said earlier, the process of settling claims same. So once everything is done, the exchanging will submit the request to STFO in order to disperse the claim to the broker. So this, this process will remain untested. Now let's talk about the various impact areas. For those claims which is not supported by the ECF, or in other words, for the class of business where the ECF cannot be used, the user process of paper and email submission to the XCS will be followed. And there is no change in that. So LBS role in claim management. The process subsidiary will maintain an appropriate level of oversight of the claim function which will be defined into the outsourcing arrangement and they will work the way it is defined inside the outsourcing arrangement. The process subsidiary will perform a level of automated checking of the claim information based on the SCM. If any issue are identified, the query will be raised with the lead managing agent and the lead managing agent will resolve the query. 
Now, in terms of managing the risk, the managing agent will expect it to continue to adhere to the Lloyd's minimum standard in respect to conduct risk management. When it comes to the ECF write-back, the Brussels subsidiary will not taking the ECF write-back information. However, the write-back information will be provided to managing agent who take up the services. Now, in terms of managing dispute, the Brussels subsidiary is the insurer and therefore it will be accountable for any claim dispute. However, the managing agent responsibility in respect of claim dispute resolution will set out into the outsourcing agreement. So basically managing agent responsibility is already there ins inside the outsourcing arrangement and they will act basis on the outsourcing agreement. When it comes to the SCM, as an insurer, the Brussels subsidiary will receive the direct SCM from the exchange. The managing agent will simultaneously receive the reinsurance SCM. As I explained earlier, the information into the direct SCM can be made available to the managing agent if required. So managing agent can also request uh, for the information uh, from the direct SCM and according to the outsourcing arrangement, the LBS should provide the information to the managing agent in order to effective claim management. The RA agreement will work on the basis that if the inward claim is accepted by the Brussels subsidiary, then the outward RA will be responded by the managing agent. So this is how the outward RI is going to be managed. So that's all about this video presentation. I hope you understand the impact of Brexit on the open market claim processes. Thank you. And that's all as of now. And stay tuned for next update and stay blessed. Thank you.